Hi, welcome. I'm Becky Mayer, and this is Transitions Body, Mind, Spirit. And today we have wonderful, we have three gentlemen with the Circle of Men. And we'd very much like to welcome everyone here. We have Sean Galloway. Hey, Beck. Washantara. Becky. And Simon McCain. Hi, Becky. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Becky. Uh, let's start out with Washantara. Can you explain to us what the circle of men means? Absolutely. You said transitions, and it's a really good place to start with what the circle of man, men means, because we've been sitting in circle now for the last 20 odd years, and we've watched each other transition through different stages of life as men. So what the circle of men has done and does do is simply make a safe place for men to come in a non-competitive, non-competitive, safe environment and share. It's that simple. Uh, not easy. At my impression of men, and I know this is a stereotype, and this is, uh, is men are either angry or dominant, uh, and how are they going to feel safe with a bunch of other angry, dominant men in a group, and how does that even work? So you're in charge of anger and domination. Uh, <laughs> Simon, a, what about anger and domination? <laughs> there's, a, there's a structure that, uh, that goes with, with the meeting and, and certain assumptions that are understood. And uh, one of them is that there's, uh, there's no violence, there's no attacking behavior in the, in the group. And, um, and there's an understanding that we're there to support each other. And that's what creates the safety. Mm. Because in our culture, we're, we're as you said, uh, men, are, men are allowed to be dominant, men are allowed to be angry, and, uh, but, but men are not allowed to, to really be in, in authentic feelings other than those. Mm. And so in the, in the circle, we explore what it's like to, to be able to check out from those stereotypes, and, uh, which we all know. And, and grew up with, and to step into being authentic with each other. And for example, if a, if a man is feeling sadness because his mother just died, he's allowed to be in his sadness. And no one tells him to stop. And no one hands him Kleenex and says, well, I can't handle anymore, Just blow your nose and stop. Uh, instead, we can sit with the man in his grief. Mm. And, we, and in doing that, we each learn something more about how to hold grief. Mm. And we also know that we can bring it there and be held when we're in our grief. Mm. So it's a reflexive thing that we learn in the process of, of holding the container for each other. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sean, give us your impression, your reasoning. Why do you go to the Circle of Men? How has that helped you? And have you been in it since 1990? Uh, I've been in it probably since 1995, maybe 94, right in there. Uh -huh. um, you know, um, for me, it's I call it critical care. Mm. You know, it's a place where I can come and be authentic. And life has many different valleys and, and mountains that we rise and fall and go between. And, and through different stages of life, it's important for me to have a place to let it air out. You know, and so I can be authentic in my joy. I can be authentic in my sorrow um, and be supported in, in that whole range of emotion mm -hmm. and uh, and that's very important for me you mm -hmm. know and um, the other reason I go is because you know I grew up with a father that was emotionally absent most of us do in this culture and what we all looked for was our father's blessing from each other because it wasn't given and so we have a lot of what I would call uninitiated uh, boys running our worlds these days mm. And so what we come together to do is to remember what honor and respect mm. and integrity is all about. So I go there because it's, it's important to me. I call, and it's, it's something that our culture, in my opinion, is, is starving for. Mm. And of course, in the olden days, men were initiated into manhood. And they've done studies to prove that when men are initiated into a manhood, they function better in society. They're more peaceful. They have a stronger sense of self-esteem and self-confidence. And, and so better for women, kinder to their absolutely. women. Absolutely. And it's about, yeah, we learn how to respect the earth 
and work in uh, honor and integrity with the earth, with women, with our children. Mm. So we teach love is basically what it's all about, and we learn how to receive it and give it and, um, and share it. Mm. You know, President Obama said this year, and I love this, he said either a man is trying to live up to his father's expectations or live down his mistakes. And this explains my particular melody the clearest. And that was the president's own words. That was Obama himself. So it's, it, it's not, it doesn't pick on any one particular uh, kind of man. This is, a pr this, is a pr this is a place that a lot of men find themselves in, isolated and lonely. Mm -hmm. Especially as we age. Yeah. And Especially. we've been in this now for what, 20 some odd years. We're in our 50s now. And we're considered elders in the community. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting experience from where we came from to where we are now and how we, we do the work, you know. Do you feel like an elder? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, there's always the young man inside of me or the adolescent or the, even the child self. But, you know, I mean, I've garnished a lot of wisdom over the years. Uh, and and to say that I know anything is ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Mm. He I've had know a lot nothing. of experiences, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of experiences, and that's that's what we share in our group. It's like it's we share our experience. Uh -huh. This is how I've dealt with. Uh, you know, we had one guy come through um, who was uh, severely cut in a robbery, you know. And and we have people that can relate to that have been you know betrayed or uh, abused severely in some some way and they can speak to him about that. They share their personal experience. And from that, we, we, uh, we can support each other. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, yeah, I feel like an elder sometimes. Mm -hmm. and other times, I feel like a, just a, a newborn, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it, there's been so much talk in the military, particularly men who don't have an avenue for their feelings. They go to war, they come back, they're extremely wounded emotionally, and suicide is their option. Um, can you, and in this circle of men, do you address what's called the, the shadow side, the side that of depression, the side that nobody wants to, a man certainly doesn't want to admit that's even there. Do you all address that? Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot in those five questions you just mentioned, but yeah, the, the uh, Michael Mead talks about uh, the stages of initiation are being taken from where you, where you are, where you're comfortable, uh, against your will, and then going through a, through a, uh, a series of uh, events, uh, things happen to you that you have no control over, and then being welcomed back to your community. And uh, the Vietnam veterans are a perfect example because they were taken from, you know, the, the first two stages were covered, but they never were welcomed back. Mm. And the welcoming has a power in it that, that is hard to imagine the depth of what the welcoming means because when, when the community welcomes you back it really accepts you back into love and normalcy but that means that it also helps you to transition back to normalcy from being the warrior the berserker that has to go out and murder people because you don't murder people in everyday life we don't give them any of that transition speaking of your transitions we just plunk them back down and maybe with um, three limbs instead of four Mm. And uh, and right. you know and and the uh, the VA is is overcrowded and uh, understaffed and they're just there's there's no way to handle the the people that are coming back so they're not being welcomed now they're 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 being welcomed in the media but they're not being welcomed to the hearts of the people mm -hmm. and so uh, there's a lot that needs to be done to uh, to to make a space to welcome people back. Um, and you, you mentioned the shadow. You want to talk about shadow? I think. Yeah. Since, uh, since let's go directly to the. Uh, yeah. Case the shadow point. man. No, yeah. not the shadow man. But you know, you're dealing with it right now. Eh? Well, you know, one of my bugaboos in my life has been depression. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you know, at the root of all of this is is a lack of being loved. You know, for me anyway. And it's like I see it. It's rampant in our culture right now. Depression mm -hmm. is at epidemic levels. Yes, it is. We are not taught how to love and be loved. For example, my ex one of my experiences is with, um, I grew up Catholic, mm -hmm. and at a very early age, I got it that, you know, I was unworthy, um, there was something wrong with me, and uh, so it was uh, like these really sort of shadows 
that have spoken to me that are, that are now just coming up in my subconscious mind mm. and that I'm able to begin to, to dance with as you know, you know bring them into the light so that I can you know begin to have more loving experiences in my life so mm -hmm. this has been challenging me for years and years mm. and and it's uh, it's critical now and and what I would like to say about this as a man mm -hmm. and of course you know being taught that God was um, you know a masculine patriarchal figure mm -hmm. Which, would, which really doesn't, didn't uh, represent authentic masculinity, in my opinion. And so what we've come to is realizing that I think it's the biggest crime in the world to teach a child that there's not a, bene a benevolent being that absolutely adores and cherishes and loves them no matter what they do. That means God? Could be God or love or whatever, yes. Uh -huh. In my experience, there wasn't a being that said, you know, I'm going to love you no matter what. Because I'm always looking over my shoulder for, you know, the minute I screw up, you're going straight to hell, you know. Ah. So this is a bugaboo that a lot of men and women live with related mm. to this. And so, the, you know, and so we look at authentic masculinity related to patriarchy and how that model for in our culture is devastating. Mm -hmm. It's, it's got to come into balance. And so one of the things that we look at is men, too. It's like, well, how do we balance that? We find our feminine side as well. And we begin to feel authentically. And from that place, we can bring it back into balance and wholeness mm -hmm. and overcome depression. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about honoring the masculine, honoring the feminine, and really becoming into, into balance so that we can restore and ha live happily. And what mm -hmm. you said, Vic, about honoring, you said about the shadow. And what I heard my brother say was honoring the shadow as well, honoring that shadow part that comes up and bringing it out. Because mm -hmm. yeah, in essence, the shadow is, is, is that which is hidden. That and which we push down, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Subconsciously. Yeah, but it, it may be good and bad things. The, the, the classic example is you're in second grade and you're trying to paint a painting of a clown and the teacher comes by and goes, ha, you'll never be an artist. And so your, that, your art goes into your shadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, being a thief is in your shadow. Um, so, so, and what they're finding in depth psychology, which comes out of union psychology, is that as you begin to invite the shadow, give it a voice, mm -hmm. um, find a way, whether it's with a therapist or in circle or in any way that you can address it consciously, um, that shadow blossoms in you and it becomes, in essence, it's bringing it into the light and you become more powerful. You become more creative. You it's become more sensitive. That, it's the fuel that feeds the inner flame. Yeah. It then so allows you to be whole. Exactly. Yeah. To the, the holy, you know, ironically, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. To be whole. It allows our spirit to burn brightly when we're able to ingest and, and give voice to our shadow. Yeah. Because yeah. it no longer bites us or keeps us down. It, it fuels our, our genius. Mm-hmm. What happens, what happens when, th when this is modeled? When a father of a house lives this kind of modeling and understands, you have a whole much, you'll have a whole lot healthier family. Different paradigm altogether. You'll have altogether. a different paradigm altogether. altogether. Yeah. And if you have a young man who is raised by a man who, is, who has embraced his darkness, his shadow, knows how to communicate with his, with his whole true self, mm -hmm. you'll have healthy young men. And, you of course, and that was left to the elders in the, in the day too. And our yeah, but the elders in our society now are, for the most part, in homes. So that wisdom doesn't get transferred back. You know, the extended family has been broken apart. Right. So it's like, I mean, for example, my grandfathers were nowhere near me. Right. I had no relationship with them. So there wasn't someone to take me under the wing. And, you know, because there's an angst between fathers and sons. That's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. The extended family comes in and says, you know, it's like my uncle was close. I'm going to take you aside and I'm going to give you some of the teachings about men. But mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to hear it from your father. Ah. Some people will, some people won't. Yeah. But okay. it's a different, you know. So, and that's why we had community of men. So because, you know, like my father was a businessman. He was fantastic at that. Right. I'm an artist. There was no connection there. Right. You're but an my artist. other, but my, one of my uncles was an artist, so I could relate with him. So uh -huh. he took, you know, he was able to bless that gift in me mm -hmm. so that I could bring it forward. And mm -hmm. made a great living out of being an artist. Mm -hmm. As we, all of us are kind of artistic, we've, 
all Well, you all are musicians, and, and you're a, uh, a fine artist in addition to the music part, too, Sean. And uh, it's a, but the, the regular people, the regular corporate world people, do, do they actually come to your circle of men? I mean, who, who comes to it? Is it just artistic folks like yourselves, or who do you welcome? There's a cross-section. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a, there's a wide doctors, spectrum. doctors, lawyers. There's doctors, Absolutely. there are businessmen, there are artists. Um, um, preachers. Of, of, there are preach ministers, um, lots of sons of ministers. Um, generations, generations yeah. now. So huh. it's 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 more. There, there's a, there's something that uh, there's a connection that you'll hear as a man, that, that or or there's something that you realize that suddenly you realize there's a hole in me that needs to be filled with something. Right. And that hole is being part of a community. Yeah. So you add the W to the hole and you get the circle. Of I I, mm. I sought myself myself I could not see. I sought my soul, and even my soul eluded me. Then I sought my brothers, and I found all three. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and that's part of where addiction comes from. It's like there's a longing for love. You know what I mean? And when mm -hmm. it's not present, they'll, people reach out for anything to feel love. Mm -hmm. And for brothers. You know, and you shoot a, a thing of heroin in there, and you're feeling pretty good for a while, a little crystal meth. You're feeling OK. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is it, it's, it's deeply damaging. But talk about the core addiction for most men, work. Work being an addiction. But, but to be the provider, they got to work. Yeah, but, but if you don't know how to relate to your woman and you don't know how to relate to your kids, you can relate to your job and you do that. Right. And that's how you get addicted to work because you, 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 and you don't learn because you are addicted to work. Then you don't learn how to do the other thing. You don't learn how yeah. to be in relationship. You don't know how to re let a relationship grow and how the interplay works, mm -hmm. because it's it's confusing when you start and there's there's no nothing in cu in the culture that says here, come on and learn this, and y and you don't know that it's even there to be learned. Mm -hmm. And so I mean this I saw this in my own father. I mean he 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 didn't know how to do relationships and he and and, and you know, beyond a certain point. He wasn't real comfortable with the kids when we were little kids, but he could work, and he could put food on the table, and, and he could put clothes on us. Their job, and he kept a right? roof on. And that's the basic ideal of fatherhood: is is the mm -hmm. you know he 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 makes it safe for you to grow and mm -hmm. and you know teaches you the basics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But something's missing too, because if you can't have a relationship with the mother of your kids, and you get divorced, and there's there's still parts missing to to because how does this help women? I mean, wow. I want to know as a woman, how does this help me with my relationships with men? Because men have to get along with the women. Here's right? a problem that and that happens. My mother grew up in the uh, I grew up in the women's movement. My mother was very active in that, and so I grew up in a household where there are a lot of angry women coming through. And no one ever pulled me inside and said, this isn't about you. You know what I mean? So oh. I grew up fearing being a man because I would be treated like that. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I would say to you is that when I started working with men, I began to understand that this is the way men operate. We feel this way. We think this way. And when I was um, acknowledged and blessed for that, then I had the ability to build a bridge to women. And it's so what I tell, you know, what I say, and what that means is it's like if I know who I am and then you know who you are as a woman, mm -hmm. then, we, have a, then we, can, we can meet eye to eye and look across the table and say, okay, how do we want to dance? You know, because, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. that, it's like that. And so how does it help women? When women know who they are and men know who they are, we can come together in a fantastic community. And it's not shame or blame anymore. It's about add to. Yeah. Mm. You know, so yeah. We, we teach, one of the things I always say to people, it's, it's like that we, men can teach women how to be gentle with their emotional energy. Because women- Say that again. Men, men can teach women how to be gentle with their emotional energy. Women are quick to feel. They can be quite, you know, they, they can go that fast. Abrupt. I'm that way actually. And what's, the, what's that song that you t talked about that- Hey, let me uh, finish, let me finish. Oh, don't, okay, don't, lose this. Yeah, don't lose this. Yeah, don't lose it. So, so it's <laughs> like, yeah, so women are quick to feel, you know. Right. Men aren't as fast. We process motion uh, a little slower until okay. we get into under the seat. So in uh, women being able to, to, to uh, 
be respectful with their emotional energy is very critical. Much the same way a man is to be learn how to be gentle with their physical energy because ah. it's, it's that women are strong. It's just again, it's a it's an overall mm. generalization. But mm. women are stronger with their emotional energy. Mm. Men are stronger with their physical energy. That makes sense. So it's like that's what we have to share with each other in building relationships. Certainly, one of the things that that uh, we hear a whole lot about um, abuse in children. You know, that's rampant again as you are in a society. This is rampant, and. Uh, for particularly for looking after our young girls, if we want to look after our women folk, especially our young women folk, train and initiate the boys. They, you know, if you don't, they'll initiate themselves. And what you're seeing right now is a result of this, all through this country of yours, North America, where gangs mm. are everywhere. They initiate themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, bullying. And it's Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, it's this lovely joke as well. I think it's kind of got a real hook to it. What you meant to say was, darling, would you pass me the sugar? And what you said was, you ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Footnote. Wow. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot that can come from men <coughs> meeting with men that will benefit women. Absolutely. Uh -huh. It's been proven yes. that, that, that uh, when babies, boys are brought home, People make um, faces at uh, at the babies, but they they uh, the making faces at babies is showing the expression of emotions, and it stops with boys almost immediately. With girls, it goes all the way through. So, in other words, girls are allowed to mirror emotions, and they're having emotions mirrored to them from the very first, and it follows them all through until as they grow. So, they're allowed to experience their emotions mm. uh, and to mirror the ones that they that they see in the people that you know, the mother, the father, the whoever relates to them as a child, mm -hmm. as a baby, as an infant. But baby boys, it stops really quickly. You know, so, I mean, people so are relating to the baby boys differently. They're not doing exactly. the they don't they, know, don't, goo -goo they don't show emotions. And, oh, he's so happy and right. all that. Yeah, huh. it stops very early. Wow. And so boys are just not allowed to be ushered into the into to the idea that feelings are okay. That you you're allowed to feel your feelings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's a do matter of being safety. Do you also. think it would yeah. be fair to say? And you know, I'm, I'm going to throw some of the stuff out there that comes up because you know. I was one of the initiators and the starters of um, grandfathers of this organisation, and now we're we, you know, we're spread all over the country right now, and also spreading into Australia. One of the biggest things that I find would, for a man thinking about coming into the circle of men, was homophobia, being able to ah. um, being able to actually be touched by another man, or or hugged hugged by another man, or feel like you could be close to another man without thinking it's about sex or right. attack. Or attack. And it's a, huh. it's a really important uh, part, especially for people that are thinking about, or men that might think, you know, I've had enough of being lonely, I'm going to do something about this. Maybe these guys actually have something. This love I see on these guys up here, maybe that could be for me. Right. We make safety. We make a safe place. Whatever you know, your preference sexually is. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You're all loved. It is true that women can tend to, you know, quickly go, Whoop, and, and uh, shame and not even realize you're doing it, you know, like, what are you doing that for? And, um, and, uh, and I forget that men can be slower emotionally, uh, but they can. And of course, men are more quick to be physical, you know, bap, that kind of thing. One so of the things that not happens. Not necessarily. But that's, yeah, that's an overgeneral, that's a generalization. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But one of the things that happens when men get in touch with their feeling uh -huh. is that they overcome that gap. So the, the, you know, it's like for me, example, I'm very quick emotionally right at the moment. You know, if I'm getting shamed, I'm in your face. You know what okay. I mean? It's like, and it took me a long time to, you know, to cultivate that, but that can mm -hmm. be learned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In the indigenous societies, you had the elders and the youth, and they were, there, was, there was a natural connection between them, mm -hmm. because uh, some would say they're both closer to God because the youth just came from there and the elders are going close. Ah. Uh, another aspect is um, they're not, um, they both have time. 
and yes. th the youth have the oh. questions and the elders have the experience to give them the answers right. and also have the time to sit with them while they make their mistakes. Mm -hmm. Whereas the parents in the middle, they're busy making, a, they're, they're making more babies, they're making a, lot, a living, they're building houses, they're, mm -hmm. they're trying to make it in life and they don't have the time. Mm -hmm. and, and they also, there's a charge as, as, as Brenton uh, <laughs> Washington said, we, <laughs> we can edit that out. Classic. Uh, there's a charge between the, uh, the father and the son. You know, they're both in love with the same woman. Yeah. Oh, okay. wow, that's a and, whole uh, conversation so, right there. Right, right. and, and, the, and the, the, the yeah. father <laughs> has his father as the elder, so, you know, they have the same, there's a, there's a clash as well. But the one that, that skips a generation, the connection that they have in the, in the elder societies or the indigenous societies would literally hold the whole society. Mm -hmm. When you break that connection, you get the fire of youth with nothing to explain it and you mm. get it burning things up, and that's what we have in our culture now. With the gangs Because and there, there's warfare. no connection. Warfare. Yeah. Warfare. Syria. You get warfare, because, because all over youth the world. is about all over the heat. World. All over. We've yeah. lost our love. Yeah, youth wow. is about heat. So Michael Mead is, is one of the ones who's out, and, and literally he's, a anger is one of the things that he's explored in his, he's a cultural anthropologist, but mm -hmm. he's explored anger um, in, in, in lots of, of workshops, and, and he, he can hold it, Mm -hmm. where it's not destructive and that helps him to be accepted by the gangs and he, he's working with, with gangs right now and turning That's them great. around because he can be respected by them because he can manifest so much of that power yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and meet them where they are and then mm -hmm. he, he can, he's just magic in what he's Like what he says, if you show me an angry man, I'll show you a scared man. Sure. Right underneath all that. One of the specific intentions of the circle is every man there gets to be heard. Wow, every man gets to be heard. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Yeah, yeah. so if you That's need to be heard thought. and you don't know how to he hear others, you can come sit and, and learn a skill that, that will feed you for the rest of your life. Very good. Well, Sean, Washantara, Simon, thank you very much for explaining the circle of men. I think everybody will be uh, much more educated. I know I certainly am. And uh, thank you very much. And thank you for being on Transitions. You're welcome.